All right, now with our uh, our scene set up and our, our model in place and our history deleted, we're going to start creating some proxies. Uh, if you uh, just joining this and you don't know how to open this uh, this panel up, uh, this is the plugin Rapid Rig Basic. We downloaded Rapid Rig and we put it in our documents. Documents Maya 2020 and the scripts folder in there. So make sure you, you download Rapid Rig Basic um, and then drag it into this folder. Uh, and then what we're going to do is make sure you, if if this doesn't work, this next step doesn't work, we're going to copy the the name, Rapid Rig Basic, and then we're going to paste it in there, and we're going to follow it with a semicolon. Make sure you're on Mel mode, not Python. Make sure you're on Mel, and then you're going to press Enter, and it's going to pop this up. If that doesn't work, and you have it in the proper scripts folder, if they, the, make sure you're in the right version of Maya. Uh, then you're going to close Maya, open it up again, and do it because uh, Maya will reestablish the link to that scripts folder upon opening. Now, next step, create proxies right there. And then we can go straight ahead and scale these down. Remember, rigging is the act of making joints, a skeletal structure that moves your verts around and then a control rig that drives those joints, that moves those joints around. Now the auto rig is super sick because we get to do both of those in the same step. Um, now I'm going to delete, I'm going to delete all these layers actually. I don't need any of these, delete, 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 delete. Sorry about this. And I'm going to make a new layer. Um, with this character. Now, if you have like clothes on your character that you want to be separate, that you could just use like a wrap deformer on, uh, then this is the step that we would separate those out. I would separate these completely. Actually, I might I might leave these. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna leave the rings attached to him. Um, and I would separate all these things out here. Because these, I, I could just use a deformer after we bind the mesh underneath to his skin. Uh, so I'm going to go to modeling, mesh separate, right there. And we're going to be binding this, what I have selected right here, to that rig, uh, to the rapid rig. Now we need to set these joints up to align with that that mesh. However, I want to, let's select all these. I'm going to add these to another display layer. I'm just going to turn those off. <laughs> and it just has rings on his chest. Um, I'm going to also turn this layer, this layer that's controlling the visibility. Uh, oops, it's not. Let me add selected object right there. So now this is controlling the visibility. I can also double click this right most box and make it R to instead make it a reference. So that means I can't click it and it'll be a lot easier to select these joints underneath. So on each of these uh, proxies, we need to place them where those joints are gonna go. I'm gonna move this root to kind of the, the pelvic area like kind of like right in front of like the the sacrum basically uh, and center of mass now you want to do center of mass on pretty much all your joints next step is going to be moving this leg into alignment there be careful not to have this middle knee joint drift this way see how this arrow is pointing to the left that means when the knee bends, it's going to bend this way, which would look absolutely broken. So don't do that. Let's just move the ankle and the hip. Uh, I like to move them both horizontally or on X at the same time. That way they don't go off axis, because if you have this sort of situation, then it's, going to get a little, then it's going to get a little funky too. So let's try to avoid that. Also, 100% keep your feet completely straight forward. Um, completely straightforward. If your feet are not forward in your model, make those changes now. Um, so I'm just moving these. I'm going to hold W and left click and let's go to object mode. And in object mode, it's going to be a lot harder to make the this arrow point to the left or right because 
we're going to be pulling specifically on the blue axis, and it'll be it'll be it's a lot more uh, difficult to get that to to mess that joint up. So next step is move this ball joint to where the ball of the foot is. You can always look in your channel box to see what you're moving around. I see a lot of the times uh, if if these get crumpled or pushed together in some sort of weird fashion, it's going to be a lot harder to. Uh, uh, it, to discern like which proxy you're moving around is, um, but always you can always just look up here. Uh, this toe, this goes at the tip of the toe, very tip of the foot, uh, and so this leg is set up and ready to go. Now we need to do the rest of the body. So I'm going to move. The next step is to move the top spine, spine O4, and move that into position. And I like to keep this sort of center of mass of that. Uh, the chest there, uh, and then these I can move a little bit inward. Remember, we're always keeping this center of mass. I know this is a skeletal structure, but uh, things deform or move around a lot much a lot better if you have them center of mass for this spine. I know the spine goes up the very back of us and then moves around like that. Uh, I suppose in, in more advanced rigs, you would do it anatomically correct like that, but uh, for this basic stuff, we're just going to keep it like this. Um, now, left clavicle, we're going to be moving this. Uh, I like to keep the clavicle inward because if you think about where your where your uh, shoulder, where you shrug, like if you do a shrug motion right now, think about where that's rotating from because this is going to be the pivot point of all of, all of these, right? Like this is the knee pivot point. We're, we're, that's why we're setting them center of mass. So the clavicle, I like to keep it inward like this. Because if you shrug the shoulders from there, then it'll it'll, it'll look like they're going up and down. Then I, it's it's kind of a cheat because we have multiple bones. We have like the whole entire shoulder girdle that's keeping track of uh, where our shoulder is uh, in real life. But again, we're not getting that detail in this. Always rotate your camera around. Make sure you're going absolutely center of mass. I'm moving this left shoulder into position. And then I'm moving the hand. Don't move the elbow first. Exactly how we did the the leg, we put the 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 uh, the base joint or for the hip, or in this case the shoulder in first, and then we align the hand or wrist joint. And there we go. Nice. And let's put that exactly where we would bend that wrist. Perfect. And again, don't move this elbow up or down. You can only move it along the blue Z axis. So make sure you're in there. You can also move it a little bit along red, but don't move yellow. Don't do that because if, if you do, that elbow is now broken. So make sure this arrow is pointing back away from it. And uh, for the, each of these fingers, I'm only going to do a few so I don't keep you here forever. Uh, we're moving them into the knuckle. Make sure they're looking good from all angles. You don't want to have you don't want to have this pivot point be like below the finger. We make sure that's in the center of mass of that knuckle. Then we can rotate this this top joint, and then we move the rest of these into position. Notice how I have my my segments set up here. You can see the the, um, the cuts I made earlier. One, two, three. That's where I'm going to be lining my knuckles up. This one goes right here. And this last uh, tip joint, you just put it at the tip. So it's fine right there. I'll just repeat that again. Let's move this into position. Move it up a little bit. Let's get it into that knuckle spot. And make sure these are uh, these arrows are pointing kind of directly out from the knuckles. So, so notice how the mine's a little bit offset. That means that when you rotate these, rotate all of them, they're going to pull down, not completely aligned with the hand. So what we want to do is rotate this top one right there. Keep it aligned with that how that finger is supposed to rotate. Nice, nice, nice. And we repeat for all these. Whoops. There we 
go. Right there. I'm just doing these fast. This is not my my final. It, it, please take more time than I am on this part because these need to be aligned properly. Like this is slipping out of the hand now. We don't want that. Rotate that down into that. Remember center of mass. Center of mass. Same here. So yeah, always keep that in mind. I guess I am doing all of them. I just want to show you guys because repetition makes this last. And I'm just aligning that right there. And let's align it with the knuckle itself. Center of mass in there. Nice. For the thumb, you do the same thing, except instead of pointing out like this, because it's just pointing straight out from the hand, we need to put it in this kind of already posed thumb. So make sure that these sort of bend outward from the surface in this manner. Because like when you when you close your thumb, you don't just go extremely planar with your hand. Like your thumb doesn't end up down here. It can if you like really torque it a lot, but uh, I like to have a more naturalistic sort of starting bend. And this joint goes back in where at the base of the thumb. This one goes at that first sort of knuckle in there. This one goes, and feel free to rotate these throughout the joint chain. This one goes right there. And so that should be pretty, pretty well set up right there for the hand. And remember, you can always go down the, the joint chain. Uh, I'll always go down the joint chain when you're aligning these things. Notice, like, you know, if I if I pose the head where it should be, and then had to move the neck, you know, it's it's pushing the rest of that. So so always start at the at the base of that joint chain. I'm going to put this at the base of the neck. I'm going to put this head at the base of the skull, but also inward a little bit. Make sure you're not going off axis on this. Like it's it's pretty well locked left and right, but just in case, don't don't go off the center line with this sort of proxy rig. Uh, now for the jaw, I'm, I'm actually going to move this maybe a little bit more inward. Right there. Yeah, center mass. And I'm not exactly happy with this either. Let's put this center mass as well and then move this head back to compensate. Right there. Now this is the jaw. Uh, your jaw, I, I like to keep it, I, it's kind of like you kind of have to picture where you're going to be rotating from because if I rotate this around, it's be rotating like this. So if I do it this high up right here, actually this looks pretty good for for where the joint is. Uh, let me move this out to the jaw tip. So let's just picture that. It does kind of crumple in on the on the neck, but I think if I go lower like this and then rotate it out, like it might not. It might, it might look like he's unhinging his jaw if I push that too much. Um, so I, I'm going to keep mine right there. And then for the eye, I have a special workflow for this. My, my eyes are perfectly circular. Let me turn on this. Uh, so what I need to do is I'm just going to hold V. Well, actually, I'm going to press W to go into move mode first. I'm going to hold V, and I'm going to snap it to the front of that pupil right there. It's right on that vert. So it's aligned. Uh, on Y, and it's aligned on X. Now we need to align it on Z, our blue axis. So if we go press 4 again, I need to find that middle span of that I, and I can just straight up align that. So now when this joint uh, rotates towards something, it's going to look like that I is spinning around its core, right? Because like our eyes don't really move when we're like when we're rotating them in our skulls, like they stay solid in that in that socket. So this is where that joint needs to be as well. Um, I'm gonna move this head to the top of the head right there. And we're almost done. Last step is notice how I've only done one side of this, right? I've only done the left side. So if I instead go to left to right, when the pose proxies, it's gonna mirror everything over. I don't have to redo all that work from before. It's gonna be very nice. Uh, I might move this shoulder just a little bit out, and then do left to right again. Careful on that shoulder area, because if you, if you have like a female character and you put this joint out too far, 
when they lower the arms, they're going to look like they're super bulky in the shoulders and they're going to look like a football player or something. So be careful about that. And I'm going to file, save as, proxies, there. And we're good to go on our proxies. We have our proxy rig set up. Next step is to generate rig. So I'm going to click that generate rig button. It's going to go through, find all the stuff. And there we go. Look, now these are the NURBS controls that are moving the joints underneath. The thing it to, at, from this point forward, don't mess with these joints. In fact, I would feel safer if you just took your joints layer and put it on reference mode right there. Joints layer, reference mode. Now I can't even click on them. Uh, so, because I, the reason I, I say that is because if you move these joints, like you'll notice that I can click on them and move them around. These aren't locked. So, you can easily break your rig. Don't delete any of these joints either. Like, if you have a character that doesn't have like a fourth finger, don't delete that. Just don't don't delete the, the that fourth finger. It will instead fix that when it comes to skinning, which is the next step. Um, but yeah, so now we have this control. I'm going to put that joint layer back on reference mode so I don't mess with it. And notice that it follows all of that. And you have these little controls for the knees. It controls for everything. Controls for the eyes. Like This is super sick. Uh, it doesn't really look like it's messing with anything right now, but we'll fix that later. Now, normally that, that step of rigging everything would take days, so that's why we're using an auto rigger for that. Um, I'll show you guys how to add joints on top of this if you need additional ones for, for some reason. Uh, but the final step now is I'm going to turn off the reference on my, uh, on my mesh layer. And I'm going to bind this skin to that joint, uh, to that skeleton. So I need to turn off reference on that. You can also select your skinning joints from here. Uh, so I'm just going to select both of those. And then I'm going to go to rigging, skin, because now we're, uh, this is the act of skinning, binding the skin to the skeleton. So this is when the verts are going to actually start moving. I'm going to go to bind skin. Uh, make sure your max influences are like five. Make sure you're on geodesic voxel and use joint hierarchy, and then you should be good. I'm going to bind skin. And it looks like nothing happened. However, if I, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to make that a reference layer again. I'm going to go into 5, and let's turn off the shaded, or the wireframe on shaded. So if I start going in here and rotating, see oh man characters actually coming alive like this is this is for real now like this is this is this is the, what ignited my passion for animation was seeing that we could just pose these characters and create cool action scenes drama whatever whatever we wanted and here we go so yeah that's pretty much it for now I'm gonna uh, I'm going to go into skinning later, because uh, you'll notice that when we, we bend this around, like the, the lat doesn't bulge out this much, and it definitely does not crumple inward when we, when we lower our shoulders. So we need to do some fixing there, um, but that, that's for later. That's for later. For now, you just have some fun with the rig experiment around. Um, you'll notice that some uh, are locked for movement, uh, that's because they're FK up here. Uh, if you want to move around the arms per se, like let's m m go to this arm switch, IK FK channel right here, type in zero. Oh. We got a nice, nice wrist that we can rotate around. We can also move it like this. And the character moves likewise. But yeah, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.